Hello dear doctors, welcome to cardiology practice session. In today's session, we will learn how to approach ECG. In our player exam, we have to encounter like two to three ECGs. So today we will practice and how we will learn how we will approach the ECG questions. So let's start. Today we will practice from the recalls of last five year questions and I will be giving you small tips and tricks how we will easily clinch the diagnosis from the ECG directly from the ECG without looking into the details question details ex uh, explanation of the question we will directly go through to the ECG we will uh, clinch the diagnosis and we will give the right answer so let's start the first question you see the question number two so look at the question number two what is the single most likely diagnosis so they are asking for the diagnosis from the given ECG to clinch the diagnosis from directly from the ECG, you have to know some basic information of the ECG. So let's go to the blackboard. So we all know that when we do the ECG on a patient, we have some lids like 12 lids, right? So there are some lymph lids and there are some chest lids. Okay. So we all know that this is the uh, second intercostal space, third intercostal space, fourth space and the fifth intercostal space. Yes. So how we actually place the chest lids? Okay. So the chest lids are actually the V1 to V6 lids. So the V1 lid is actually in the fourth intercostal space on the right side. Right fourth intercostal space that is the V1. The chest lid V1 and the V2 is placed just to the opposite left fourth intercostal space. So V1 to the right and V2 to the left and then the V3 and the V4. The V4 lid is actually along the mid clavicular line in the fifth intercostal space. We know that in the fifth intercostal space in the mid clavicular line, what is the anatomical landmark? Yes, that is the apex of our heart. Okay, so the V4 will be just over the apex. And where, what is about the V3, the V2 and V3 between these two lid, the V3 lid will be placed over here. We all know that. And the two other lids, that is the V5 and V6, that will be placed, the V5 in the anterior axillary line and the V6 over the mid axillary line. So this is how the chest lids of ECG are actually placed. So if you just imagine, this is the heart okay this is your heart this is your heart is situated over here so you see the lid v1 to v4 they are actually collecting the electrical activities from the anterior surface of the heart so v1 to v4 are actually the anterior surface of the heart they're collecting the signals okay now for the v5 and v6 they are actually collecting the activities from the lateral portion of the heart, right? So, from the lateral surface. And if we uh, just go a bit details, V1 and V2 actually, they are solely anterior, V1 and V2. But the V3 and V4, they are collecting signals from directly the septal part of the heart. Okay. So, is it clear till now? So I am not going to go in details about the leads of the ECG. I'm just discussing in grossly so that you can have a better understanding. So now about the limb leads. Yes, what about the limb leads? We all know that the, the limb leads are placed in the arms, the left and right arm and the foot, right? So the AVR is the lead which is attached to the right arm. Then the lead AVL that is attached to the left arm and the AVF that is the foot which is attached to your left foot. Yes. So now what about your heart and what about the axis? We all know that our heart is slightly rotated to the left. That is the normal axis of your heart. So the lead AVR is actually placed in the right arm L to the left arm and the foot F for the foot. Okay. So now actually there are some vector lines between uh, connecting these leads. There are some vectors which are being produced that is the lead 1 and the vector lead 2 and the vector lead 3. 
okay so these are actually the vector line which is calculating uh, which is uh, actually calculated by these three lids that is the avr avl and avf so you see over this <coughs> lids you can assume that this two three and avf of the ECG leads, they are actually collecting the electrical activity or signals from the inferior surface, right? Inferior surface of the heart. And you see the AVL and the one, these two are actually collecting from the lateral surface of the heart. So we can say that 2, 3 AVF equal to inferior and 1 AVL equal to lateral. So these are about the limb leads and the chest leads. So if we summarize the chest leads and the limb lead, we can also write that lateral equal to, we have learned one AVL and also we have learned from the chest leads that the five, six are also supplying, uh, also collecting the signals from the lateral side. So the lateral equal to one AVL, V5 and V6, right? And the inferior equal to two, three, and AVF and the anterior equal to we have already learned that V we just write it down over one second anterior equal to V1 V2 anterior septal equal to V1 V2 V3 and V4 so if a person is having anterior MI in which leads we are going to look for the abnormalities? Yes, in the V1 and V2 leads. If the person is having anterior septal MI, the ST elevation will be where? In the V1, 2, 3 and 4 leads. And if the person is having inferior MI, there will be abnormalities in the 2, 3 AVF leads, right? So that is the gross idea about the leads and also the leads which are presenting which part of the heart. Okay. So another uh, information I would like to add over here. So if this is your heart, we have to know the blood supply as well. Why we need to know the blood supply as well? Because in the exam, there are not only coming questions coming from the um, MI, the area of MI, they are also demanding the artery supplied by the particular area, they're also asking the question from here. So we all know that the left anterior descending artery and the right left, left coronary artery, the coronary artery has two parts, left and right coronary artery. So the right coronary artery and left coronary artery. The left coronary artery is actually descending down in the anterior surface of the heart calling the left anterior descending artery which is actually passing through the anterior surface and up to the apex that is the LED and there are another circumflex branch of the left coronary artery or left anterior descending artery which is the circumflex branch which is supplying the lateral portion of the heart and the right coronary artery is actually going to the posterior surface and it is supplying the posterior and the inferior portion of the heart okay so we will write it down over here that is the LED equal to anterior plus septal the circumflex equal to lateral surface of the heart and the right coronary artery is actually supplying the posterior plus inferior surface of the heart. So, if a person is having ST changes in the anterior leads, that is the V1 and V2, so the person is having anterior MI, so which supply, which blood vessels has been occluded? Yes, that is the anterior surface of the heart is supplied by the anterior descending artery. So if, if a person is having the anterior MI, which artery has been occluded? Left anterior descending artery. Okay. Now, if the person is having inferior MI, which artery has been occluded? That is the right coronary artery because we know that the right coronary artery is supplying the posterior and the inferior branch. So, dear doctors, from the ECG, two types of question can come. What is the diagnosis? That is the what is the location of MI and also they can demand for the artery supply. So, yes, now we are going directly to the question. Uh, to the question. So, in the question number two, you see now you apply their knowledge. What is the single most likely diagnosis? So, what is the diagnosis? You see the lead two. 
lead 1 is absolutely fine in the lead 2 you see there is an st elevation lead 3 there is an st elevation and in the lead avf there is another st elevation and the other leads are st uh, are there is no other ST elevation only in the V1 and V2 you see there are ST depression right so if there is ST elevation in the 2 3 and AVF what is the type of MI yes that is an inferior MI so the answer will be inferior MI so you have got the question in your PLAV exam they are asking for the diagnosis you have looked at the ECG there are ST elevation in the 2 3 AVF so the diagnosis is inferior MI and now you look at the question 72 year old women presented to the emergency department with the chest pain so 72 year old women chest pain inferior leads are having ST elevation so this is the diagnosis confirmed that is the inferior myocardial infection and if the question you have asked that which blood supply has been occluded so we all know that inferior equal to right coronary artery and I hope and believe that there will be no more uh, confusion regarding the site of MI and also the blood supply of MI and I think that you can diagnose and you can give the correct answer from this discussion thanks